If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. You would think that since my favorite card in the game is Glistener Elf, that I would love aggro strategies, or tempo, or aggro combo, or whatever the case may be. But for some time, in Standard, my favorite deck has been Esper Control. And while I've never had the deck fully, uh, that is, non-proxied, I've played quite a few games with this strategy, dozens, certainly, at least dozens. For a while, I was using Narset Transcendent, and the reason is because she holds your deck together so well if you're a creatureless control deck like, say, Super Friends, which is what I've been running. However, we no longer have Narset in Standard. We do have Dovin Bond, that's our Azorius replacement, but he doesn't serve quite the same role. So this is my update for you of Esper, not Esper Awaken Control, let's just say Esper Super Friends. There aren't nearly as many Awaken cards anymore, and for good reason, I'll go over those in just a bit. To start off, we have our six Planeswalkers that really threaten our opponent, ones that can actually win the game. We start off with, very simply, Liliana the Last Hope, lowest on our curve, the plus helps to kill creatures every now and then, or at least hold them off. The minus two lets us get our creatures back, and we do have a couple in here, so it's not useless. It's not like it was in the creatureless version, to be sure. Uh, but it's also not great, because we don't have that many creatures. And then the ult just outright wins the game. You put X22 black zombie, zombie tokens onto the battlefield. Not tapped. Seems good by me. Now, next, no, she's a one-of, we also have a one-of Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, which I've experimented with having as greater than a one-of, but I don't think this is the kind of deck where Gideon excels, and so he's just a one. Very simply turns himself into a uh, indestructible, no damage, planes, well, both of them together, indestructible and prevent all damage dealt to him. Okay, 5-5, five, five, that can also bring some allies to the party every now and then. And then the ult doesn't win you the game. We don't have so many creatures that the emblem really makes that much of a difference. That's part of why he's not greater in the deck, to be sure. Also, we're a heavy, heavy, heavy control deck, not a mid-range deck, as could more easily take advantage of that. Next, we have two Obnixilis Reignited. The plus is black card draw. Draw a card, lose a life but do this over and over and over and over again uh, until you get to the ult, which just outright wins the game for you. To be, <laughs> it should anyway. It's one of those, like Liliana, it wins the game, but not immediately, not on that turn. It's not like Jace the Mind Sculptor. The opponent could get out of it. And then, minus three, destroy target creature. If you need to, yeah, it's just a Planeswalker. It's a win condition that also holds them off for just a little bit. Ob is a two of, as you saw. Our next two of is our curve topper for Super Friends, Soren Grim Nemesis. This is certainly my favorite of the walkers in the list. The plus is a win condition, the minus X gets some life back for you and fights other planeswalkers, the ult is a win condition, and all on this six mana bomb, frankly. He's awesome like that. Starts off with six loyalty and only needs to get to nine. And great hand advantage, yada yada yada. What else is there to say, right? He's good enough that on his own, basically, he could prop up the Orzhov control decks that were running around in the last format, and that I expect to still be around, albeit to a somewhat lesser extent. Now, this next one doesn't win the game, but he does keep you from losing. Dovin Bon. Plus one, give a creature minus three minus oh and its activated abilities can't be activated. I misread that the first time to read creature or planeswalker. Oh, would that be awesome. But no. But, starts at three. You can use the minus one three times to gain a total of six life and draw three cards. So, in certain matches, that will be what's better, obviously. And, of course, nowadays, as they tend to template them, 
up to one target creature, so if they have no creatures, don't worry, you can still plus them. Uh, the ult is sort of a double winter orb. They only get to untap two permanents, up to two permanents, during their untap steps. So it doesn't win you the game, but if that resolves, if you can actually get that to go off, you shouldn't be able to lose. Similarly, we have Jace Unraveler of Secrets. Now, instead of being a minus that draws you cards, it's his plus on a 5-mana walker. Scribe 1, then draw. He has the Jace the Mind Sculptor unsummon, albeit it's minus 2 in this case. Starts at 5. And then the ult gives Force Spike to the first... It gives you an emblem that makes the first spell that they cast get auto-Force Spiked. Uh, no, 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 not Force Spike. What am I thinking of? It just straight up counters it. My bad. I don't know. I guess I was getting some Chancellor of the Annex shenanigans going on. Oh, my bad. No, he's he's good, but again, he doesn't actually win the game for you. On his own, Jason Reveler of Secrets can't win you the game. But, you know, if that goes off, you can't lose, and he's a great card advantage engine. Next we have the one of Kalitas Kalitas, Trader of Get. What else is, what is there to say about this guy that hasn't already been said? First of all, abs. Okay, there's that. That might be it. Then, lifelink on a harness lightning uh, proof body. Normally harness lightning proof. And exiles their creatures, and gets zombies in, and can get bigger, and the zombies don't come in tapped, <laughs> and, and, and. The only matches where he isn't great, I would suppose would be control list, uh, because they can deal with him, he's kind of slow, but that's why we have our next one, which is Gonti. Where Kalidus can shine in the aggro and midrange matches, Gonti works against the control decks. 2-3 Death Touch, that isn't a great body to be sure, especially for 4 mana. But when he enters the battlefield, look at the top 4 cards of the opponent's target opponent's library, exile one of them face down. For as long as that card remains exiled, not as long as Gonti is on the field. So that means that if they deal with Gonti, you can still cast that card. So yeah, you look at it, you may cast it, doesn't work on lands, but works on everything else, because you can spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast it. That sounds pretty good. Now unfortunately, it isn't as great against the control decks as you might think, because that's not a when you cast trigger, it's a when it enters the battlefield trigger. If they happen to counter it, you don't get the card. It's legendary, Kalidus is legendary, we have an opportunity cost for running more than one, but I think that we're fine here. So, one, one, two, 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 one, one, one. We are very much respecting the legendary and the planeswalker rule in this deck. Now, for our, uh, let's go through, since I've already shown you the planeswalkers, we have three oaths in the deck, the ones that are for our colors. We have Oath of Gideon, the two white 1-1 one, one core ally creature tokens should stall the game for a little bit for you, just keep you from dying as quickly, and each planeswalker you control enters with an additional loyalty counter. That's great for a number of reasons, obviously it gets your walkers close to their ults, closer rather. In the case of Gideon, you can pop him for the emblem and still keep him around, and because that's creatures you control get plus one plus one, that includes himself, he's a 6-6, six, six, yada yada, that's always very nice, to be sure. So that's one of them. The next we have is Oath of Jace. Draw three, discard two when it enters the battlefield. So nice filtering action. It's another, not cantrip, but another card draw spell for us. That helps with Delirium, and we do have a few Delirium spells. At the beginning of your upkeep scry X, where X was the number of plane walk planeswalkers that you control. I hope to get another Liliana or another Black Walker or something, because I want to have all. I want to have seven. Well, I guess another Lily went and helped, unless I got rid of you. I want to have well, a Johnny. A Johnny's on. Yeah, a Johnny's around. Anyway, another Walker for Scry Seven. I've gotten Scry Six, and I've done it on camera before. So this is crazy. This is so good. It just outright wins you the late game. That's really what it does. Uh, and next we have Oath of Liliana. So when it enters the battlefield, they sacrifice a creature. Fair enough, it's a sorcery speed to the slaughter. 
on a legendary enchantment. And again, all of these are one ofs because we respect legendary. And we have enough card draw that we can afford a bunch of one ofs. At the beginning of each end step, if a planeswalker entered the battlefield under your control this turn, put a 2 2 black zombie not tapped onto the battlefield. That means that you can be a little bit more aggressive with your walkers because you can get a 2 2 zombie to chump block for, or hopefully more than chump block, but not likely, right? To block for them. That means that you don't have to worry quite as much about running your planeswalker onto a field that has another creature. Well, two creatures, right? Lily Oath of Liliana deals with the first one by making them sack it, and then you play a walker, right? And you get a zombie. You get a Zamboni, I like to say. So these collectively take up you know, three slots, one for each. Next we have for some card draw, and we do certainly need card draw. And selection, we have Anticipate. There's not much that this deck is doing on turn two. I am not entirely sure, looking through it. There, there's not anything else that we're doing on turn two in the main board. Anticipate is an answer for us. We say go big or go home in this kind of deck. Just, it's impulse that's worse, but this is good enough, right? Impulse for three is good enough in this standard, or in standard in general, I would assume, I would hope. Next we have four Ruinous Paths, because we need something to do against Planeswalkers in the main board. This also has Awaken 4, which is normally out of Harness Lightning range, and it's another win condition in the deck, potentially. Very simply, destroy target creature or Planeswalker. Notably though, it does not deal with the Looter Scooter, with Smuggler's Copter, because it's sorcery speed. For that, and many, many others, we have one of my favorite additions, Sky Whaler Shot. Destroy target creature with power 3 or greater, and then scry one. It might not even be good enough if it were just destroy target creature with power 3 or greater. We might run Immolating Glare instead, but it has scry one as well, and that is, of course, immensely helpful. In a deck that's playing so many one-ofs and needs to get past dead draws, yada yada yada, this keeps us alive against the Looter Scooter. We can use it before combat, or before attackers. Whew, it's good. Underrated. A lot of smaller creatures we aren't as worried about because we can deal with them either with other removal or just by getting online before they can kill us. But we also have two to the slaughters. Only two because this is really exceptional in the late game. We don't need them as much in the early game, and so it's okay if we just have fewer. Target player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, so it's another planeswalker interaction spell. Usually, though, this won't deal with smuggler's copter because they'll sacrifice the creature that tapped for the copter. So, not great on that front, but later in the game, it's just a two for one against so many decks. If they're running Gideon, if they're running Chandra, Nissa, you get the idea. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a control deck with white. Without running some Wrath Spell, I used to be running Planar Outburst. However, I'm not running as many Awaken cards in the deck, and so as a result, I'm not running Planar Outburst because I don't need to protect my own land creatures, and it is nice to be able to destroy the opponent's land creatures every now and then. And to that end, we run Fumigate. Destroy all creatures, you gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. So it also helps us stabilize just a little bit. Uh, beyond destroying their creatures, that extra life can help us to get back in the game. Same mana cost as Planar Outburst. Uh, they're pretty much done with printing unconditional 4 mana rats, uh, but they're okay with printing 5 mana rats that are better than just destroy the creatures. We're gonna get better than Day of Judgment. I very much like Fumigate. I think it's mostly an upgrade over Planar Outburst. There are some matches where I'd like to be able to pay 8 mana and get a 4-4 four, four in, to be sure, and it's it works well with other Awaken cards, but you'll notice that I'm missing something that I used to have in here, and that is I'm not running Scatter to the Winds. And that's because it has Awaken, well, for a number of reasons. One, it has Awaken 3, which means it dies to Harness Lightning, which is seeing a ton of play. If it sounds like I'm harping on that card, it's because after looking at what we've seen so far, and in my local meta, uh, for Kaladesh standard, Harness Lightning is kind of everywhere, and so that's something that I'm... It's on the front of my mind, it's salient to me. I need to keep answers for it. And 
Scatter to the Winds just doesn't deal with that because it has Awaken 3. Additionally, it doesn't counter any spells or abilities in a way that exiles them. So one thing that you could run in here is Void Shatter. I have two more slots that are going to be filled with counter spells. You could try Void Shatter, I think that's good, but in my local meta, because we still have something like a quarter of the field is Delirium, and that means Emrakul, I'm running two summary dismissals in the main board. Exile all other spells and counter all abilities, rather than just simply counter spell if you do exile it, because that doesn't work on Emrakul. Yes, it's four mana as opposed to three, and maybe it's still better to have the Void Shatters. In my meta though, I think Summary Dismissal is better. It's good enough that actually in the sideboard, we'll be seeing more of you. That's a meta read. Uh, everything that I say here is going to be, tailor it to your meta to be sure. This is a control deck. You can tailor your answers and even your threats to what you expect to come across at your LGS or your PPTQs or your game days, etc. Summary Dismissal is an example of that. Delirium may not have made top 8 at the Pro Tour, but it's still showing up in my local meta, and I have to respect that. Now, for our land base, let's see. Well, we have, we're going to start off with four Evolving Wilds, very simply. You know what this does. Terramorphic Expanse. I actually don't remember which came first. Sacrifice it, go get a basic, it comes in tapped. Great turn one play. Typical turn one play, right? Okay. Running out of room. We'll just stack them all together. Gideon gets to be on top of Liliana, apparently. I'm I'm seven, that's funny. Okay, so next we have seven. What am I talking about? I'm 17. There we go. We have three, uh, speaking of being 17, I'm a 17 year old boy. Look at that island art. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so yeah, no, just three islands sort of speak. You'll see why in just a moment. Three planes. Wait a minute, what are you doing with all these basics in a deck that's running double of a given color over and over and over again? Well, and four swamps while I'm at it. Matching arts, just in case my opponent looks and sees one, and then, I don't know, I don't know. It, it's nice to be able to trick the opponent by having all of the same art. If I, okay, this, this is what I mean while I'm at it, and I'll get to the rest in just a sec. If I have one art and then a different art, and my opponent sees just one, but then I draw this and play it. I, I don't want that to possibly happen. Yes, it would be better to always play this one, but sometimes you forget. It's nice to not have to worry about that. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, we're running all of these basics because we are also running the Battle for Zendikar dual lands, the tango lands in here. We are running four prairie streams. They just speak for themselves. Well, no, not quite. I'll get to that in a second. And then four sunken hollows. Now, why not port town? Why not choked estuary? Is that what it's called? I think so. Uh, why not run those instead? The reason is because so, these are better for coming in untapped later in the game, when we're more likely to have at least two basics. The Shadows Over Innistrad lands, the, those duels, are more likely to come in untapped in the early game, when we have more cards in our hand. As the game goes on, it's not as likely later on that we'll have lands, let alone the kinds of lands that we need, in our hand. So, in the late game, when we need the lands to come in untapped the most, these do that job. I don't want to risk needing, say, five mana for Fumigate and having a uh, port town but not having a plains or an island. I don't want to risk that. It's easier to get away with it with Prairie Stream and Sunken Hollow. Now that being the case, that is going to put us a little bit behind to be sure. I think that we're okay with that and the reason is because this deck does a fairly good job of stabilizing, right? And we need those extra colors. Now, you know, one color comp, one guild, another guild, where's the other one? Where's Orzov? Well, we have Shambling Vent. It's a 2-3 body, decent enough blocker, it has lifelink. Uh, it can get in for beats, especially with Gideon ults, uh, especially, especially with uh, Oath of Gideon 
into Gideon alt into keeping Gideon, <laughs> something crazy like that. Yeah, Shambling Vents is there to get some life back for us more than as an actual win condition, but it certainly can happen. Uh, for one thing, just removing their creatures, eventually you'll have some openings. For another, Ruinous Path awaken onto Shambling Vents for a 6-7 lifelink creature. You get the idea, that's pretty nice, right? And then lastly, we have our sideboard options. Now, the sideboard in this is... Uh, well, be because we have so much card draw, it's rather large, it's expansive. One thing that I like so much about playing a control deck with this much card draw is that we can afford to run a bunch of one and two ofs. And indeed, we don't have any in our sideboard that happen to be greater than a two of. It's nice to have so many different answers because it means that we can answer so many different decks in the format. And so, with that, let me show you our sideboard. We start off with two Anguished Unmakings. Just deals with everything, but at a price. They're not in the main board because there are enough good aggro decks, vehicles, vampires, uh, artificers. There are enough good aggro decks, Green Stompy, that I don't want to have something that reads You Lose 3 Life in the main board. But against mid-range and control decks, uh, especially other Super Friends decks, that is perfectly fine. Speaking of being able to deal with uh, creature decks, we have Descend Upon the Sinful. Exile all creatures. So obviously this deals with Eldrazi, especially like Worldbreaker for instance. Delirium, you get a 4-4 White Angel. It gives us another Wrath spell uh, that keeps the creatures gone for a little bit longer. Grief against Delirium, it, they're slow enough you can get to descend upon the Sinful usually, but they also need their graveyard. They want to be recurring Ishkana. They want to be, if you can manage to deal with Emrakul, say with a hand attack spell, or some, yeah, it's not summary dismissal, bad example. Um, they take the, the extra turn from you and see you have a Fumigate and say, well, crap. In other words, eventually you'll get to the point where you can deal with them more readily. Uh, more permanently, rather, I should say. It is late here, I apologize. Next we have a 1 of Essence Extraction. Instant speed, 3 damage to a creature, and you gain 3 life. Again, there are enough aggro decks, and there's still a burn deck running around, bear in mind, that this not only serves as a creature, but you gain 3 life. Sometimes that feels like a 2 for 1. If you consider gaining 3 life as its own card, and sometimes it is, that's a 2 for 1 at instant speed for only 3 mana. That's fine, I'd say. Next, this is sort of a catch-all answer. Imprison in the Moon. Deals with Eldrazi, deals with opposing planeswalkers, problem lands if we come across them, just turns it into a land that is colorless and taps for colorless and loses everything else about it. Also great art. Top tier art. Well, Rebecca Gay didn't draw it, so not quite top tier, but high tier. Then we have a one of Linvala the Preserver. Hopefully we can survive long enough against most aggro decks that we can get to Linvala, and when sh we do, she basically reads, you stabilize. You get a 5-5, five, five, and you gain three li or 5 life, and you get a 3-3 three, three White Angel, which first of all, 3-3 three, three White Angel? No. These are angels. Descend Upon the Sinful makes angels. These are like angel might? Like little angel? Well, uh, baby angels. There we go. Babies. They're only one one weaker than you are. Alright. Enough about that. Just as a one up though, six mana is not necessarily easy to get to. Then we have two negates. Deal with the mirror. Deal with control decks in general. Just. There's a lot that Negate can deal with at this point, and it gives us something else to do in the very early game. Especially if we're on the play against uh, black control decks that can play Transgress the Mind. That is a top tier card against us. That is super good. Against Super Friends. Also against the control decks, I have a one of Painful Truths. We are a three color deck, so we can converge for three readily enough. If the deck is not putting a lot of pressure on us, we don't worry about the life loss, but it's a 3 for 1 otherwise. And that seems pretty good by me. We don't run it in the main board for the same reason that we don't run 
uh, anguish on making. Although we could, if the meta is such that we're all right with that, go for it by all means. Next, as yet another anti-control card, the win condition of all win conditions against them, Sphinx of the Final Word. Can't be countered, and flying, and hexproof, and makes your instants and sorceries uncounterable. 5-5. Five, five. The only downside, what, it's 7 mana? That's about it. <laughs> Pretty good. His answer is always no. Love that flavor text too. Ay ay ay. Getting late, almost done. Then we have two more summary dismissals in the sideboard. For Delirium, for Control, just as another great card. Uh, this can even this can come in against mid-range too, right? Deal with their answer or deal with their threats using your gratuitous amounts of removal. And then just hold these up. Once you already have the board uh, established with your planeswalkers, you may not need to cast another spell for the rest of the game, and so you can hold these up rather readily. But again, it depends on the matchup. Next we have our two copies of Transgress the Mind. Seems pretty good, right? Deal with control deal with everything above aggro. This can be good against. Everything above aggro. Now that being the case, sometimes it's hard to know what to take out, but Transgress the Mind lowers your curve, gives you an answer in the early game, uh, and it gives you an answer to their answers. That's one reason why I cite it in so often. Again, I, unless we're talking about a deck like uh, vehicles or like vampires or not dwarves, uh, artificers, that's usually fast enough or not too slow. And then the last one is not natural state. This was just to remind me that it's fragmentize. Unfortunately, I don't have that. But I, I bring up natural state because same cost, except it's color shifted to white. It's a sorcery instead of an instant. And it destroys them CMC four or less rather than three or less. That's the price we pay for getting sorcery speed. Or making it CMC three is the price we pay for instant speed. So pretend that's fragmentize. It's on the screen. And I apologize for that. I just somehow do not have that yet. All right. And in any case, this is the deck for you. If you have any suggestions, any comments, any constructive criticisms, then feel free to leave those in the comments below. As you can see, this is a control deck that is made for... It's supposed to be able to deal with everything, and it can, but it isn't great against anything, I would think. Perhaps some mid-range decks that are running around. I think that we have a decent uh, time against Delirium, but other than that, we have to go to our sideboards to get the answers that make them exceptional, make this deck great. So I would say this is probably competitive REL playable or something very similar to this. You can tweak the exact numbers around, and again, summary dismissal may be Void Shatter, depends on what you expect to come across. Something at least very similar to this, if not this, can be competitive REL playable. At the very least, it doesn't have any bad matchups except some extremely low to the ground decks that just hit everything they need to hit. If they just go straight on curve and everything is uh, the best card for that slot, then yeah, you're, you're probably not going to do so hot. Even then though, Let's see, uh, three mana removal in Oath of Liliana, Ruinous Path, Skyweather Shot, To the Slaughter, Fumigate. You do have answers, <laughs> Kalidus. You do have answers against even those low to the ground decks. But then again, nothing is a sure win for you. You have 26 lands, that's an awful lot, even for standard, right? But you have enough draw power that you need those lands, first of all, that's why we have so many. And then with cards like Anticipate and Oath of Jace, later, and Jace, Unraveler, etc., later on in the game, when you don't need the lands, go and take your others instead. Easy enough. Alright, that's it for now. I will see you all later. Take care, Magic Community on YouTube. Bye-bye.